once more and again, God has allowed us in his presence. We do give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. I want to thank God for his love and kindness. Been with us all day long. That's good news. Amen. He carried us, brought us, covered us. Saw fit that we arrive at his house one more time. I want to thank all of you who come out to share in this uh, Bible study. And I, I do um, appreciate your hunger and your thirst after righteousness and uh, in studying the word and fellowshipping on Tuesday night in uh, Bible study. So we pray your coming here won't be in vain, but we're going to. Uh, jump right on into this message this evening um, I want to share this uh, before we really get into the, the subject matter we're talking about um, people have to understand that every part of you know what goes on with the church is important yeah. and I'm not judging nobody I'm not criticizing nobody nothing, nothing like that you know, people can do what they want to do. You know, just between you and your God. That's right. But this Bible study is just as important as Sunday morning worship. If not more important. Because you get the opportunity to really read the Bible for yourself with somebody with a little bit of knowledge. I think I got a little bit of knowledge. <laughs> And they can break it down and if you have questions or, you know, something that, that don't quite feel clear, you can ask questions. Mm -hmm. But see, when we're in a worship service and the preacher preaching, you don't stop him in the middle of what he preaches. Like, oh, hold up, pre um, can you say that again? I, I don't quite understand what you're talking about. You don't interrupt right in the middle of worship service, you understand? But see, here at Bible study, you get an opportunity to ask questions if you have questions or, you know, we go a little bit slower so we can, you know, really read the Bible together and be on the same page, be on one accord. So I just want to throw that out there because, you know, and, and, you know, many churches, they don't fill up Tuesday and Wednesday or whenever they have Bible study. They don't fill up prayer service, you know, during the week. They fill up Sunday, first Sunday, Mother's Day, Easter, Christmas, stuff like that. But, you know, I just want to throw it out there that this is just as important. This is just, this is more important than a church meeting. But we'll cry to me. <laughs> want to know what the church doing. But this here is a meeting. All right. Everybody, every church ain't teaching this same subject every every time we have a, a a Bible study. They may be teaching something else. You know, I'm I'm speaking on this evening. We're gonna be speaking on obedience to the Word of God. You know, every, if me as a pastors, they may not be talking about obedience to the Word of God, right? But God has given this pastor a message this evening to study. Dealing with obedience, which everybody within this congregation needs to understand that we have to be obedient to the word of God. If we want to continue to do the will of God and the work of God and be faithful servants of God, we got to know his will. Y'all with me? So this is a meeting. And when you, when you talk to your brothers and sisters in Christ, the other members, after uh, 8 o'clock when you go home, if you talk to her, say, y'all missed the meeting. <laughs> we done made some decisions. Y'all missed the meeting. <laughs> well, pastor ain't tell, he ain't tell her we're having no meeting. <laughs> I did tell you. We tell you every, every announcement. We have it on our bulletin. We got Bible study on Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock. That's the meeting. We're going to talk financially. We're going to talk spiritually. We're going to talk about what the church doing. We're going to talk about what the church shouldn't be doing. We're going to talk about our procedures and how we should act and conduct ourselves at the meeting. 
<laughs> Tell them they done missed the meat. So every part of what we have um, going on at, at our local church is to the glory of God and it's very uh, necessary, it's very important that we attend and, you know, be knowledgeable about what's going on in every aspect of this church. The meeting, every meeting. All right? That's one of the reasons why I'm going to say this and now I'm going to move on. That's one of the reasons why um, not just prayer when we have a meeting, I include a scripture. And not only just read a scripture, but I break it down because it pertains to something we're talking about in that particular business meeting. All right? Because we got to include the word of God in everything we do at this church. All right? It takes obedience to the word of God. And if we're not abiding by the word of God, then we are in error. And I'm not trying to lead nobody astray. I'm not blind, so I ain't trying to lead y'all into no ditch. Because the blind will lead the blind into the ditch, right? <laughs> My eyes wide open. They might be slanted now because I've been working all day. But they is wide open. I am well aware of what God is trying to do within our congregation. So um, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, they missed the meeting. That's all I'm trying to tell you. We had a meeting and we discussed some things that are very necessary to where we headed. And where we headed, we gotta be obedient. Obedient to the word of God. All right, so we're gonna be looking at a few scriptures this evening, but I'm gonna start uh, in Luke chapter number 11. And one of y'all be my uh, my time bearers, my time keeper. And just hold your hand up when it's about 10 minutes tea. Okay? Somebody, just remember. Just, you ain't got to say nothing. Just, just hold it up. Say it. All right? Luke chapter number 11. And this is, a, this is a scripture that really stuck with me as a babe in Christ. Uh, when I first received Christ, this is one of the scriptures that stuck with me because... At a, as a as a a young Christian, I needed to know how to please my God, and we don't really know how to please Him unless we would study His Word, know what He says in in the Bible. You know, that's our blueprint. That's our you know uh, that's how God guides us and leads us in His Word. It's in the Holy Bible. Amen. Amen. So Luke chapter number 11, verse number 28 or 27. Let's go to 27. It said, and it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, blessed is the womb that bear thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. All right. So everything Jesus says got power. We got to understand that. He speaks with authority, and what he says, that's what he means. All right. Now, many times, especially in, uh, and I've been seeing it a lot, when I go fellowship with other congregations and I talk to other uh, believers and people that, you know, you know, a lot of people go after the masses. And when everybody else starts doing something, they start doing it. When people start, you know, throwing out signal phrases, then everybody start throwing them out, you know. And they get on this train and everybody start talking the same way. You know, like, uh, just, just for example, too blessed to be stressed. You know, when somebody starts saying that, everybody starts saying it, you know. And is that really authentic when you just picking up and saying stuff that everybody else saying? You see what I'm saying? So we have to be careful about trying to run after what everybody else doing, running after what everybody else saying. And here Jesus wanted to make this perfectly plain that it ain't about what everybody else got going on. It's about what God says. 
<laughs> y'all know if y'all don't know nothing else about y'all pastor here at St. Peter Community Church, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it basic and plain. All right, it ain't about all that other stuff. You gotta be obedient. You gotta do what God say do. If you say worship a certain way, worship that way. But don't be just making sounds and saying things and making, you know, dancing and doing this and that just because everybody else don't. Y'all with me? Be authentic with your worship and your praise and how you serve God and your obedience to him. This is between you and God. You know, too many people putting on shows and, and just, you know, going with, the, with what everybody else doing. Y'all better just, just cut all the foolishness out. God's, you know, God ain't happy with no, um, I don't even like to say the word, no hypocrite. God ain't happy with that, no actors. We got to be serious and be for real and be sincere in how we conduct ourselves in the sight of God. The best way to, to please God is to read his word and be obedient to his word. That's all I'm talking about this day. Do we know his word? We've been, a lot of us in the church, many of us in the church, we've been raised up in the church. So somebody deposited the word in you. And the Bible says, when my word go forth, it won't return to me void. Y'all with me? So whenever somebody done spoke the word over you or planted the word in your heart, it's in there. You can't deny it. We know right from wrong. We know what God requires of us. It's just we deny it and want to do our own things. But what I want to tell you and what God requires of us is for us to be obedient to his word. Now, is that too hard for us? <laughs> whoa, whoa, there's a lot of people in this world going astray. There's a lot of Christians don't know how to conduct themselves in the house of God. And some of them know how to conduct themselves here, but when we get outside the walls, we don't know how to conduct ourselves. Why are we make it so hard? That flesh is strong. <laughs> that flesh will draw you the wrong way. But we have to make a conscious decision daily to be obedient to the word of the Lord. That's all I'm trying to, that's all I'm trying to plant in you this evening. And it's a daily thing. It's a Every decision thing. It's a every time you get ready to do something, you gotta bring up the word and be obedient to what God say about the situation. That's how you know you can't slip. Because if you slip, the devil gonna get you. You gonna say, Oh, God ain't say it like that. He ain't mean that. How God ain't mean it, and he wrote it. He he gave it to us written. He wanted to make sure. That it wasn't, you know, like we did the little uh, game at the at the gala around Christmas. We had somebody from the table would say a certain phrase to the next person, and then they'll go say it to the next person, and then they'll say it to the next person. And by the time it got through about six people, it wasn't the same thing that the first person said. <laughs> so God knew that if I sent my word down through the ages orally, just people saying it, it would get mixed up somewhere down through that. Somebody would add to it, somebody would take away, somebody would forget, somebody would just, just plain mess it up. But if I write it, if I have my prophets write it, then ain't no mistake about it. You can go back to what I said and there it go. It's going to still be the same. Because it's written. And, and the Bible says, my words will not change. Now, as Jesus was teaching and preaching, and all the people started to gather around him and crowd around him, this woman lifted up her voice. Is anything wrong with lifting up your voice? The Bible says, make a joyful noise. Now, I want to tell you how to... How people take that out of context just because your uh just because your worship service is loud don't mean what you loud about is pleasing in the sight of god <laughs> yes make a joyful noise but all noises ain't joyful 
<laughs> Same way with God. How many of y'all love to hear a baby crying? Ain't that no one? That's Noah. I'm going to tell you what, and I said this one, one Sunday, I'm going to tell you what Noah's I hate to hear. If I'm trying to pray or, or, or preach and somebody opening that mint candy, them rappers making all that noise, just... <laughs> <laughs> making noise. But is, it, I mean, but is that, is that uh, enhancing the atmosphere or that's Distracting from the atmosphere. Distracting. All right, the same way with God. If our hearts are not sincere, but we shouting hallelujah and making all these so-called tongue noises and, and praise the Lord, but our heart ain't right with God, do you think God is pleased with that noise we make? The Bible say, it says in 1 Corinthians 13 that we can do all these things, but, it, but if we don't have love in our heart, it's like a tinkling cymbal. A sounding brass. Like God ain't pleased with that no. This woman, the Bible said in verse uh, 27, it came to pass as he was speaking these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice. Now, how many times we lift up our voice? What are we saying? And sometimes we, you know, if you don't study the word of God, if you don't understand the will of God, you can be saying things and don't really know what you're even saying. You can think you're saying the right thing, but you go back to the, what the Bible say and, and it's not pleasing in God's sight. I heard people, I done heard people teach this. That's why you gotta be, be careful who you under. It ain't no such thing as no cuss word. <laughs> we made that up. But the Bible says, out of the same mouth should not come blessing and cursing. Mm -hmm. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. So what's the corrupt communication then if it ain't no cuss words? I don't know. Let me move on. <laughs> so this woman, she lifted up her voice among all the people and she shouted something out to Jesus. All right? And so when we come in the worship service, what do we say? What do, we, what do we shout when we come into the worship service that's pleasing to God? How do we know what we're saying is pleasing to God? How do we know we're praising God right? Or how do we know we're saying the right thing in the sanctuary? You know, pe these people that, you know, and, and tongues is a, is, a, is a real fad. I know tongues is a gift of the spirit. And I believe in speaking in unknown tongues. I believe in the interpretation of tongues. I believe in all of that. But it got to be as the Spirit give you utterance. Now, how about if somebody's saying all this, this, Yava, Saba, Daba, Daba, y'all know, know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And so, how about if that is a, a real language and somebody in the, the church where they at really understand what they're saying and everything they're saying is a cuss word in that language? Y'all understand what I'm saying? But they don't know what they're saying because they're just trying to put on a tongue show. You got to be careful. If God ain't told you to say that, if that don't come out of your belly, out of your spirit, by the power of the Holy Ghost, keep your mouth closed. <laughs> just throw your hands up. If I can't say a word, I'll just lift my hand. I ain't got to say all that. If, if the spirit didn't give me that, I ain't going to say it. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. What, what am I trying to say here? This woman lifted up her voice in, among all the people that was around Jesus. And what did she say? The Bible says, she said, Blessed is the womb that bear thee, and the paths which thou hast sucked. <laughs> in other words, Mary is blessed. <laughs> That's the womb that, 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 that conceived you. That's the womb that you came out of. That's the one that nursed you. You know. They ain't had no similac. You know? I'm just being real with you. 
That's what she, and you know, here's Jesus, the miracle worker. Here's Jesus, the son of the living God. Here's Jesus, the one that opened the blinded eyes and, and made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. Here's Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And what she opened up her mouth and said, blessed is the womb you came out of. Blessed is your mama. Your mama blessed, Jesus. So what about, you know, and there's some religions in this world today, and I, I ain't judging nobody religion. It's that between you and your God. But I'm just talking about, I'm talking about the every knee shall bow, Jesus. I'm talking about the every tongue must confess Jesus is Lord Jesus. <laughs> I'm talking about that Jesus. When we open up our mouth and pray, the, the Bible say God ain't going to share his glory with no human, no flesh. He's a spirit. We should worship God in the name of Jesus. Yes. So instead of her, you know, raising her voice and, and celebrating Mary, Jesus' mother, what should she have been shouting? Come on, y'all, praising Holy Ghost feel people. She should have been praising Jesus. <laughs> come on. <laughs> but sometimes we let stuff come out of our mouth that we don't even fully understand what we're talking about. That's why it's important we be led by God's Holy Spirit and we study his word so we'll know. You know, a lot of people just mimic what other people do. And, and the Bible says... Uh, and I keep saying the Bible says tonight because I want you to understand. You can Google it. Go Google it and you'll know. That's exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So the, the Bible says uh, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that find that way. Right? But straight and narrow is the way that leads to life eternal. But few there be that find it. Now, a lot of people just like to mimic what everybody else doing. That's why a lot of churches looking like the club. A lot of churches looking like concerts. A lot, a lot of churches looking like uh, entertainment places. Mm -hmm. They taking Jesus out of it. Yeah, they'll say a name in the, in the service, but at, at, at the end of the day, they getting the glory. All right, we got to stick with what the Bible says. Jesus get all the glory. We don't worship no other thing, no other idols. And just because you bouncing and, and, and everything is groovy, what that sound like? <laughs> everything is lit. Just because all of that, that don't mean your worship is right in the sight of God. You got to go back to the heart. This woman lifted up her voice. And, and the key is, with all them people around him, Jesus heard her voice, so she must have been shouting loud. Yeah. Now, I'm not, I, I'm not uh, knocking loud in the house. Now, you know, make a joyful noise. Praise the Lord, but let it be sincere from the heart. Let God move your spirit. Don't just be doing stuff, acting like everybody else in the house. And then when you go to some other church, you just sit there like a little church mouse. And you can't even hear you. Won't say nothing. You just act like that in a certain atmosphere. But if the, the worship is for real, no matter where you go, you ain't even got to be in no house. You can be in the grocery store and the spirit of God move on your soul. You think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. Your soul cries out hallelujah. You can worship him in the car. <laughs> I know, hey man, I done got so full riding around, you know, between jobs sometimes, I just have to pull over and just, just hang my head and, and just, because if I do this right here while I'm driving, I'll be in a ditch somewhere. That's right. <laughs> so I just have to, you know, pull over and say, you know, just sometimes I don't even say nothing. It's just, oh, thank you, Jesus. My, my soul. Lord, have mercy. So this woman, she yelled out, she shouted out, but you got to understand, when, when you're in the presence of God, you got to worship him. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and like I was saying, there's a lot of it, it's some religions in this world today that actually worship Mary, the mother of Jesus. They worship Mary. You know, they got statues of Mary, the Virgin Mary, and all of that. So I forget what they call it. It, it ain't Mary, Mary, quite contrary. That ain't the one. I <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> but it's Mary something. Mary, Mary something. So, but anyway, we have to worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I want y'all to understand when Jesus' response was, she, what what she say? She said in verse twenty seven. She said, "Blessed is the womb that bear thee." And the path which thou hast suffered. That's what's blessed. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said in verse 28. He said yeah. Rather. Alright. Rather. Blessed are they that hear the word of God. And keep it. Now am I, am I calling my mama. Saying my mama ain't blessed. No. But Mary gonna have to answer for herself. She, she gonna still have to hear the word of God. And keep it. <laughs> when she when she gave when she uh submitted herself to the will of God, when the angel came and visited her and told her what what was about to take place, she had to do what? She had to hear the word of God and be obedient to it. Y'all with me? Yeah. That's why she was blessed to give birth to Jesus Christ. Now what if she would have heard the angel give her the word? That God sent to her and de denied, did not be obedient, then Jesus wouldn't have came through her. Y'all see how important it is that we be obedient, that we humble ourselves and yield ourselves obedient to the word of God. God speaks to us just like he spoke to Mary, just like he spoke to the prophets, just like he spoke to the people in the Bible. He speaks to us the same way. But it's our response to his word that makes the difference. And many times we're not obedient. Many times we rather do our own will than do God's will. Many times it's easier just to do it our way rather than do it God, God's way. So Jesus said, yeah, rather. In other words, I hear what you're saying, but this is what you are saying is not right. What I'm saying, what I'm going to tell you, this is the way to do it. Rather than saying, blessed uh, uh, is my mama, Mary, the womb that I came out of and, and the paps that I suck, rather than saying that's blessed, hear the word of God and keep it. That's who's blessed. Hear the word of God and be obedient to it. That's who's really blessed. Y'all with me? Y'all blessed this evening? Yeah. All right then. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I got two. I got a couple of yeses. I, I don't want to know now. Yeah. I'm just asking. Yes, Lord. Jesus said, "Blessed." He said, "Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it." Now, how simple is that? Now, how do you know what to keep? How do you know what to be obedient to? You got to study the word. When you hear a preacher preach, stay right there with him. Read it right there. Mm -hmm. Somebody said I was at church at a revival. And everybody was, you know, when the preacher get all into it or whatever, the people, they, they get all into it. And I don't mind. Get into it. Yeah. Give me an amen. I don't mind. But this particular revival I was at, I was sitting there. And I'm sitting there. I'm just looking. And I'm listening. I want the content of what you're telling me. I don't want to miss it. And I don't want to be amening to something that, that ain't written right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and after the service, one of the uh, ladies came up to me. She said, you must got a lot on your mind. And I thought about it. Why, why would you say that? Because everybody else up shouting. But I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm like an eagle 
fix on a mouse and I'm just looking. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to hear what you're saying because I need to get fed. Mm -hmm. All right. I went to a uh, <laughs> went to a place in uh, Florida called it's called the Sugar Factory. It's very popular. Everybody want to go there and eat. But it's the atmosphere that people want to engage in because the food, the bread on a burger, if I had a bat, I could have threw it up and just, <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard. So you engage in the atmosphere, but you still leave that hungry. I ain't mean to call no name, I'm sorry. I'm gonna edit that out, because I don't really want no name. A certain restaurant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's the atmosphere that people want to be in. Mm -hmm. But then when it come down to, to eating, to me, the food wasn't that good. Y'all with me? Yeah. And it's just like that in a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. They want to be in this atmosphere because it's, it's hype. It's crunk. We saying all the same things. We saying all the 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 the, the lingo. The, the we got a church language down pat. But then when it comes to the preaching, the teaching, the word, how we live in our character, it don't line up with God's word. We're not being fed, and so we're not. We can't be obedient to God because we don't know the word of God. That's just like. That's just like, and I'm going to move on to another scripture here. That's just like uh, when we were younger, our parents told us to do certain things. And if they went to town and came back, that thing, that that whatever they told us to do had better be done by the time they get back. <laughs> Whether it's wash the dishes, hang them clothes on the line, uh, take that chicken out so it can thaw something. Whatever it was, sweep that yard, do something. If it ain't done by the time I get back, it's going to be trouble. Mm -hmm. Consequences and repercussions. Y'all with me? Yeah. It's just like that with God. Yeah. See, when they when the parents came back and it wasn't done, what was the excuse? Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't understand. That's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? They go to They go to rain. All right, but see, when it come to God, it's the same way. When he come back for us, he going to ask us. He going to require of us. He going to, you know, pull up everything we have done. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, I believe, chapter 12, every good thing, every bad thing, and every secret thing. He going to bring it all back up. And what's our excuse for being disobedient? I ain't understand. Nobody told me. No, I gave you my word. So you know why you ain't do it. Same way. But God ain't got no switch off the tree. God got fire for you. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. So Jesus, uh, he said, rather, blessed, is, uh, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. So let's go to, uh, we're going to go, you can hold your finger there, uh, Luke chapter 10. Let's go to uh, Luke. What was it, Luke chapter 11? Go to Luke chapter 10. Flip back one chapter. Verse number 38. Luke chapter 10, verse number 38. It said, and, he, and she, no, uh, verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. All right. What did Mary do? Sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Mary, but Martha was cumbered about much service. 
and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered her and said, and said Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Lord, have mercy. Okay. Then we got Jesus, and we we got Mary and Martha, her sister. Jesus entered a certain village, and he came to Martha's house. Martha received him into her house. Now, it's customary, you know, you got a guest at your house that you you, you make your uh, guest at home. Fix them a glass of water or Kool-Aid or something. Make them feel like they, 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 they welcome into your home, you know. Make sure everything nice and tidy. Uh, should be tidy before the company comes. Not trying to straighten everything out when the company there. <laughs> Especially, you know, I, I don't like when people just show up at my house. But I mean, if you, if you do, then okay, you know. <laughs> Lee, give me a heads up so I can throw the blanket over the clothes <laughs> or something. <laughs> All right. So uh, Jesus came in Martha's house and. She was doing all her, her, you know, guest, you know, host type thing, you know, making sure everything in order, you know, instead of just appreciating the fact that Jesus was in the house, she had all this other stuff going on, all right? So <clears throat> Mary, meanwhile, the Bible said Mary was in the house, but she sat at Jesus' feet and began to listen to what he was saying. He, she began to listen to his word. So evidently he was speaking, he was talking, he was teaching. He was just, you know, expounding on the word, having conversation in the house. But Jesus is speaking. He don't just be talking for nothing. Y'all with me? I go to... Uh, Restaurants every now and then, or even at some of the grocery stores when you're in line, and I guess, I guess they taught to uh to speak these little, you know, these little entertain little conversations that really don't mean that, just to be talking. Y'all experience, experience that sometimes. <laughs> I guess they taught to do that, you know, so it, so you think that you engaging with them so they can get a big tip type stuff, you know. Ooh, that's a nice, nice shirt. I, I was somewhere one time, and I got a little scar right here. And, and the, 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 it was a young girl, like she was just starting. She was like, oh, look at that scar on your arm. Now, what that got to do with anything? You don't bring me my bread and, and take my arm? What you talking about? <laughs> just trying to engage in conversation that really don't mean nothing. But see, what I'm trying to tell you, Jesus don't speak and just be throwing words out there. Jesus, when he speaks, it, it's important that we listen to what he's saying. Because Jesus speaks at a divine time. The Bible said, look, it, it, it said it came to pass. It was a certain time. It, it was a certain time that he came through this village just to be at their house. Now, what Jesus was speaking at that time was important, very important for that time. Y'all with me? So while Jesus is speaking words, you know, and, and the preacher preaching and what, what God is saying through the revivals that you go through and, you know, whatever going on in that season that Jesus is speaking, you got to hear it. You got to hear what Jesus is speaking. But Jesus, uh, Martha was upset with Mary because Mary was sitting down listening to Jesus speak. But she was up working, doing all this other stuff. And Jesus responded to her when she said, uh, don't you even care that uh, my sister leaving me to serve by myself? Jesus answered her and said, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. You are distracted. You are overcome. You are overtaken. You're doing too much, Martha. Sit down. <laughs> All right? And many times 
God is trying to say something to us, but we too distracted. How you going to be obedient to what he's, he's telling you and you can't even hear his words? Jesus told Mary, he, he told Martha, he said, one thing is needful and Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Yes, it's a good thing to serve, but many of us don't even know how to serve because we don't know the word of God. If we get the word of God first, we'll be pleasing in God's sight. We'll know how to serve God's people. We'll know how to be obedient. We'll know how to please God. That's the reason why a lot of people serve in the church, but they don't know how to treat people. <laughs> a lot of people are treat certain people nice and treat the other folk any kind of way. Oh, we got, we got, uh, we got picks and we got clicks. But see, if you study the word of God, you will find out ain't no, no, no clicks in, in his church. He says, there are no schisms in my body, in the body of Christ. There's only one body. And what you need to do is learn how to love one another. That's what the Bible would teach you. And if you hear the word of God, you got to do what? Be obedient to the word of God. And, and that's what Jesus was telling uh, Martha. Mary had chosen the good part, the most needful part. Yes, okay, you fixing me a glass of water, you, you, you fixing me something to eat, and you cleaning up, and you getting everything tidy. Okay, that's all right. But now, you need to hear the word of God. Don't come into church wanting to work and don't know what God wants you to do. <laughs> Every part of God's church is a ministry, and people don't understand that. I told y'all once before, I went, I think it was a funeral. And this lady, uh, after the funeral, you know, they give you the repay. They had chicken on top of chicken on top of chicken. And I already ate, but I just wanted, the chicken was good. And I just wanted another piece because I saw everybody had ate and everybody had just sitting around talking and nobody else was in line. So I went back up. All I wanted was probably another wing or a leg or something. You know, I ain't be greedy. Don't give me a breast and a wing or a basket. You know what I'm saying? I just, just give me another piece. So I went up there and, you know, I asked for another piece. She gonna dig all right in there and get the little, little, little piece of chicken out of there. That ain't how you treat company. <laughs> And I'm gonna tell you like this. A lot of people, even with something, something as, as as we might think is small, we think the preaching part is the only ministry in the church, but that ain't true. You understand that every part of God's uh worship, every part of God's church is a ministry, and we serve one another, we serve other people. Y'all with me? So uh evidently she was on the kitchen committee, and I'm talking about our kitchen committee. We got a blessed kitchen committee yeah. back there. Uh, they nice. Mm -hmm. They they get you want another piece? You want another piece? You want some more? You want some more? <laughs> they so hospitality back there. They so hospitable. Alright. So uh that's that's okay if you wanna serve. And and what Martha was doing was good. She wanted to serve, but she didn't understand the will of God. But Mary her desire was to understand the will of God. So she sat at Jesus' feet to hear the word of God. Y'all with me? Once you hear the word, you can be obedient. Y'all with me? I just want to make sure y'all getting the most needful part. All right. Uh, let's move. How much time we got? It's 7.50. It's 7.50? And you ain't hold your hand up, see that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you hit it right on the head. <laughs> I knew it. But but see, it's storming out here. We might well go on to about 8 30, 9 o'clock. So we got some water back there or something. So we go over to work and then we'll serve you a little bit of water and hopefully the storm die down. We don't nobody, you know, hydroplane and then just Still trying to be obedient to God's word. Amen. Still trying to be obedient. I want to throw this out here and then we're going to, uh, we'll probably wrap it up. But just keep in mind that that uh, uh, Jesus told this woman that lifted up her voice in, in the uh, midst of the whole crowd, 
blessed is the womb that, that bear you and blessed are the paths you suck. Uh, and Jesus said, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. All right? Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. All right? We watched a movie at my house, me and my kids, a couple nights ago. And uh, it was like a projector screen and it had to be dark. So, you know, it get kind of dark, kind of late. And so we were watching the movie, and every now and then they'll look over at me, and I'm not that. <laughs> I'm sleeping because it's late, and it's a movie. I'm laid back in the chair, and so I'm sleep. But when it when I come to the house of God, you won't find me sleeping. Y'all with me? Because I'm attentive to what God is saying to me. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, I wonder. I don't judge people. I just go by what I see. I just yeah. try to, you know, go by what I see. Mm -hmm. When I see people going to sleep in church, mm -hmm. that says something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that movie wasn't that important. That, that movie wasn't going to tell me how to live my life or what choice I need to make about my life. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? That was just entertaining. But when I'm in the house of God, you ain't going to find me now nah, nah. It don't matter how tired I am, but I'm attentive to what God is saying. I need to know what God is saying because I need to know the word of God in order to be obedient to what he's saying. I, I can study the word. I want to know what he's doing in this atmosphere. All right. It just, it just puzzles me how people can come in God's house and go to sleep. And it, it just says to me, you're really not interested in what's going on in here. It's not that important. They ain't listen to what the preacher said. What's that? They ain't listen to what the preacher said. They ain't listen. How are you going to listen when you sleep? <laughs> but the minute you say, the benediction, stand up for that. They, they wide awake, ready to go. <laughs> Let me move on here. I do want to get this out. I want to. Uh, Speak this here and then we're going to leave. In 1 Samuel chapter number 15. 1 Samuel chapter number 15. 1 Samuel chapter number 15. I'm, I'm going to read verse number 22 for the sake of time. You can go back and read it at your leave the whole chapter. But verse number 22 says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken or listen than the fat of ram. All right? So basically here, uh, Samuel was sent to Saul, the king, uh, because Saul had been disobedient to the word of God. Saul was commanded by God to destroy the Amalekites totally. But what he did, instead of totally destroying the Amalekites, he kept some of the valuable all right, and he also kept the king alive, and so in his disobedience, God snatched the throne from him. He lost the throne through his disobedience. Ain't that something? And Saul's King Saul's reply was that I feared the people. That's the reason why I did it. And Samuel said to Saul, Samuel said, to obey is better than your sacrifice. Y'all with me? That's all I want to throw out there at you. To be obedient. What did Jesus say? You are blessed if you hear the word of God and obey and keep it. And it, it, it just behooves me. It just 
you know, I just wonder how people claim to be of the household of faith and don't want to do what God say to them. <laughs> I don't I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I mean, I do understand it because people much rather, you know, follow after the flesh, but at some point in our life, in our walk with God, it has to just hit us in our heart, convict us. God, I want to be pleasing in your sight. We all come up short, but if you're a child of God, you learn how to love people. Yes, I don't, you know, some of the battles that we fight are, is hard, and some people can't overcome certain things in their life, but at the end of the day, if you follow Jesus, you're going to learn how to love and respect people. Amen. You're going to learn how to value life. And not only your life, the, the lives of others. <laughs> it's some things in our life that take a little longer than others, but it's some things that God gives you just by walking in his way, just, just by chasing after him. And, and one of the things, you will know them by the love they have one for another. You will know my disciples by the love they have one for another. Hear the word of God and keep it. He wants you to obey. You ain't weak if you obey the Lord. If you love your enemy. If you don't retaliate or stoop to nobody level. You ain't weak. Matter of fact, you strong. Because you got self-control. You ain't got to, you know, give them what they gave you. You can give it to God. Oh, Lord, y'all going to make me go another hour. <laughs> well, I'm going to shut it down. Y'all got anything y'all want to say before we leave? Good service. Good service. Well, bless your heart. <laughs> Amen. So with that in mind, um, we'll, we'll end this session. Um, but I want to just give you a, 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 a easy way to remember what we, what we talked about this evening. Study the Word of God. You'll get knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Study the word and pray. And God will give you that knowledge, that wisdom, that understanding. All right? Then when you study the word, believe it. Have faith in what you read. This is the word of God. This is what I believe, and this is how I'm going to live my life. So study, believe, and then what? Do it. Obey it. Keep it. That, that's the way to just keep it simple. Keep it simple. You can do it. All right. Let us stand. God, our Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit that makes your word plain. So, Father, I pray that you continue to strengthen our faith that we'll believe you and take you at your word. And then, Lord, give us strength that we may go forth and be doers of your word. Ultimately, Lord, we realize it's up to us to decide to be obedient to you. So, Lord, we commit ourselves to you. We humble ourselves to do your blessed will. We want to do what's pleasing in your sight, God. So, Lord God, continue to teach us. Continue to show us the way. Continue to give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. Continue to guide us into all truth by the Holy Ghost, yes. and we'll be able to do your blessed will. We thank you now, God. And Lord God, as we leave this place, but never from your divine presence, we ask that you go with us, cover us and keep us, even in this storm as we leave this place, and allow us to arrive at our destination safely. Yes. We ask all these blessings in the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 amen.